The message you're about to listen to is a message from Apostle Eric Nyamiche, the chairman of the Church of Pentecost. Apostle Eric Nyamiche preaches the gospel in its simplest form to help the believers walk in Christ and also how the believer relate with his world. This year, the message is on unleashing the church to possess nation. Join us and let's learn from Apostle Eric Nyamiche and be a blessing to the world. If you are new to this page, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on that notification bell so that when new videos are uploaded, you can have access to it. Make sure you go to our own page and check out for more videos. Thank you. Isaiah 52 verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 52, 1 and 2. Awake, awake, Zion. And when we are talking about Zion, we are referring to the church. Clothe yourself with what? Strength. Put on the garment of splendor. Put on what? The garment of splendor. Because the outside people should see you well gladded. They should see your beauty. So you have strength within and splendor without. Can you say that? Strength within and splendor without. So there's so much strength in you. Meanwhile, you are well gladded in your costume or your attire. So you are attractive. You are strong. And then if you have the message, then there will be deliverance. There will be deliverance. Put on your garment of splendor. Jerusalem, the holy city. Now the church, the holy people of God. The uncircumcised, that is the unbeliever, and the defiled will not enter into you again. Shake off your dust. Rise up. Sit and throne, Jerusalem. Free yourself from the chains of your neck. Daughter of Zion, now a captive. If you're a daughter of Zion, you cannot be a captive. So free yourself from every chain. And let us go out there and be strong. And put on our splendor. And then reconcile men unto himself. After all, we also have the message of reconciliation. So when we are strong, we'll be able to carry off out our mandate very well. So awake is you sleeper. And put on your strength. And Christ will rise upon you. In the name of Jesus. Now verse 7 of Isaiah 52 says this. Verse 7 of Isaiah 52. We have just studied that when there's a revival, then we can go out there and express evangelism. Let's read together. How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, your God reigns. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach good news. Now, but if you can't preach good news when you don't put on your strength, your good news will not be accepted when you are not splendidly clothed. You have to put on your garment of splendor. Now, when we do this and we put on our strength, no weapon fashioned against us will prosper. Nothing will be able to stand against us. For greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Greater is he. And once we put on our strength and we are well gladded in our holiness, the zeal of the Lord of hosts in us will accomplish this. And many will come to the saving knowledge because of you and because of me. Hallelujah. Nothing will be impossible to accomplish. Ezekiel 31 from verse 7. So, I'm imagining that we have put on our strength and then we are out there at your workplace in the midst of the corruption. Nothing should be impossible. Nobody should think that the Church of Pentecost cannot lead the churches in bringing Ghana out of corruption. Nobody should think this is impossible. Nobody should think it is impossible. You see, when the presiding elder was talking about the prison and all that, I was laughing. You see, those who were saying negative things, they help spread the message. Yeah. So we thank God for their lives. After, <laughs> they help spread the message. After all, we didn't build for them. We built for the prisoners, and then it's okay. And they are our clients. Now, once that burden is there, 
Anyone who comes to prison, you come and meet us there. Yeah. You come and meet us there till kingdom come. Yeah. And then you come and meet. You see, we have Pentecost prison chaplains. Pastors are also there. You come and meet us. <laughs> you come and meet us. When they put you there, then you, before you, you lift up your head, I'm there. Yeah. We pray and we go out here here for, and by God's grace, he has given us some of these people somewhere. Eh? And we go and build for them, give them good place to sleep. And then by the time they wake up, Christ is standing by their best side. <laughs> Christ is standing by their best side. It's only that, you see, this is the wisdom, and it has shocked the devil. Yeah. It has shocked the whole world. They never thought that somebody would think about prisoners. Yeah. It has shocked them. They said we should have built schools. If we have built a school, would that, would that have been the news? If we build hospitals, the Romans have bigger ones than this. It would not have been the news. The devil is crying. And I'm telling you, these prisons, individuals who are not members of the church are building it. Yeah. They are building it. One person who is not a member, he is building two. And, and that is the mystery. People who are not members, they are building it and they will build it for us and then we will present it. That is what God is doing. So, in the valley of the dry bones, the hand of the Lord was on me and he brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of what? Bones. He led me back and forth among them. And I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley. Bones that were very dry. They were breached. He asked me, son of man, can these bones live? I said, sovereign Lord, you alone know. <laughs> I like Ezekiel. Somebody a meaning. If these bones can live. You are the sovereign Lord. You alone know. That was very good. You see, Isaiah has given us a picture of Israel that is covered with sores. And now somehow, this Israel is dead. And now it, they, they are disintegrated. They are, they are not just skeleton. They have been dismembered. Bones have been dismembered. And it has become bleach. Very dry bones in a valley. And this is a revelation. It's not... It's not a physical thing. He saw a revelation. And then he says that, son of man, can these bones live? And Ezekiel said, you are the sovereign Lord. You alone know. See, Ezekiel was then asked to prophesy unto the dry bones that here you dry bones live. You see, he was confronted with death. Could he bring life out of this dead and dry bones? He was confronted with curse. Did he have any cure for these dry bones? As a man, he must have shuddered at the sight of the valley of dry bones. But pivoted on Ezekiel's faith are the destinies of thousands, if not millions of people. All these dry bones, whether they will live, will depend on Ezekiel's faith. Now, God is, God is saying a prophesy. But you need faith to take the word of God and look at these bleached bones and then prophesy. It is not about prayer. He was a man of prayer, but he was also a man of faith. Now, let's listen to Ezekiel. There... On the dry bones, this is what Ezekiel said. Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. I prophesy unto you. Now, have you seen dry bones with ears before? But he's saying that hear you dry bones. Thou sayest the Lord. I prophesy unto you. And as he prophesied, this is what the Bible says. There was a noise, a rattling sound. And the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them. 
but there was no breath in them. Now, Ezekiel prophesied, and then bone came together, and then flesh covered them, but there was no life in them. So these are corpses. What is the use of corpses? And God said, Ezekiel, I, I think that by now you are encouraged. Prophesy that life should come into them. Then Ezekiel said, this is the word of God to you. Life, come into these beings. And the Bible said, life came into them. And they stood as a mighty army. Hallelujah. They stood as a mighty army. My brothers, you see, we serve an omnipotent God. When we connect our impotence to his omnipotence, impossibility is dissolved. Yeah. We, we, we don't have strength like Ezekiel, but God is the almighty God. And then when we connect our impotence, our inability to his omnipotence, then I said impossibilities are placed behind us. Can we change the attitude of Ghanaians, this indisciplined attitude of Ghanaians. Yes, we can. Can the church succeed in curbing corruption in the land? Yes, we can. Can we possess every sphere of society with the values and principles of the kingdom of God? Yes, we can. We can do that. We can do that. Can we change the media landscape? Yes, we can do that. What about the political landscape? We can do that. Can we influence the nation in part of righteousness? Yes, we can do that. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. If you are willing and obedient, we shall take this nation. Unless we are not willing. It doesn't matter how dry the bones are. It doesn't matter how corrupt the system seems to be in. You are God's agent of transformation. Possessing the nations, I am an agent of transformation. Only that you do not know that you have the ministry of reconciliation. Only that you are not conscious that you have the message of reconciliation. Rise and begin to prophesy that life should come to this office. Life should come to this nation. Righteousness upon the land and many who come to the saving knowledge of Christ. Maybe you are seated there, you are asking, can my marriage be turned around? Yes, it can. Can I secure a job? Yes, you can have a job. Will I be able to complete school? Yes, you complete school. God will be your provider and the zeal of the Lord will accomplish it. All God is waiting for is someone who will trust him as the sovereign Lord. Will trust him, will trust in his living word and apply it as he hears God speak and situations will change. John Wesley did it and we can do it in our day. How many of us are willing to profess unto the dryness of the bones? Shall we rise to our feet? Let us begin to pray in tongues. I want you to begin to pray in tongues until you see that the river of life is flowing through you. Shall we pray in the name of Jesus? Lord, I believe all things are possible. If you believe and I believe and we together pray, the Holy Spirit will come now and Ghana shall be saved.